Go for it. Hey guys, how are you? Happy Thursday to everyone. Hello. We, uh, we just got finished uh, our podcast with Simon Dyson, six-time mm. European Tour winner and an absolute top lad, really, isn't he? That was a fantastic conversation. Great yep. uh, chat with Simon. Um, I think <clears throat> everyone kind of knows so Simon's uh, so pedigree as a player, former top 30 player in the world. I mean, can you imagine getting to 28 in the world? Nope. <laughs> How good do you need to be to get to oh, he was the 28th best player on the planet? Yeah, and that was right after. So he peaked right after he uh, won the Dunhill. That yeah. was his highest ranking. Yeah. He won the Dunhill. He won the Irish Open. He won the uh, KLM Dutch three times. Just, Dutch. just an absolute top, top lad. Yeah. Um, really good to hear his stories and, and what he's bringing and from an experience standpoint to uh, to the, the coaching world. I think anyone right now who's actively working on their game and is in the UK. Yeah. Should probably go take a visit to his, his school. Yeah, the Simon Dyson uh, Coaching Academy is, is definitely something everyone should, should sort of check out. He is applying a, a sort of uh, a method that is not really done by other coaches. Mm. I think when you guys hear the, the, the podcast, you think to yourselves how kind of, um, I don't know, modern, how, how kind of refreshing. Refreshing is a good term. I love, I love how he's, he's, it's not, you, you don't go and take an hour lesson with Simon Dyson. No. You're with him for the day. And I won't, I won't kind of go into too much of the details. Like yeah. Get that from the podcast. You know, it's worth hearing it from him yes. uh, with regards to that. So uh, quite amazing. Some uh, Craig's asking there. Mm -hmm. Morning, guys. Announcing the winner of the Freaky DK customization vote. You announced it yesterday, didn't you? Or did you? Did you just tell uh, yeah, me? it's on it's on our Instagram. Yep. On our Instagram. Yep. Check out the Instagram. A little blue with a little silver. It's mainly oh here. It's nice as what it is. It's good, eh? It's gonna look really good. Can you flip the camera too for a second? So it's anything nasty boy. You see that okay? Anything mm -hmm. orange will be silver. Ah. Uh, the jailbreak little screws there will be blue. I love that. And this white detailing will be blue. Love that. To Sean match is the uh, shaft. To the shaft. Sean is asking, mm -hmm. you watched the podcast with Rick Shields. What was it like doing a video with him? We had a great time. Yeah, I would, I would say the biggest thing that we were left with after doing that with Rick was it was just a really easy conversation, wasn't it? And we've never actually spoken to him before. Like we've exchanged messages here and there, you know, like give each other a thumbs up or whatever. Sure. But we've yeah. never actually spoken. So yeah, it felt like someone we had actually known for a period of time. It was, there was definitely no kind of like lulls in the conversation. Everything was yeah. really interesting. I think he, he opened up quite a bit about what got him into YouTube and mm -hmm. um, I thought his stories about uh, driver versus driver were really good. Yeah, um, it was good, wasn't it? It good was insight. good. Um, we got lots of good feedback. People saying that, you know, we, we posted, posted obviously, you can see the timestamp, hour 43. A lot of people commented like, I wasn't gonna watch all that, but yeah. then they got into it and ended up finishing it, which I think is a good testament to it being a good chat. Exactly. Yeah. Well, if there's ever a time to, to, to take a dive into that, I mean, split it up. You know, I, I heard a lot of people saying that Maybe they were splitting it up into two or three sessions. I do that with podcasts. I all do the that. Time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Why not? You know, audiobooks. I would do that. You know, if it's mm -hmm. uh, you know an eight-hour audiobook, okay, you know you're you're going to try <laughs> and get that going over a week or so. Yeah, a couple hours a day yeah. at most. And yeah, no, I totally agree. Lots of people asking um, when we're going to get Peter Finch on. It'd be great to talk to Peter oh, Finch. It's a shame we can't make that happen. Except for four and a half hours from now. <laughs> That talking to him at 4 p.m. Eastern we time. We are talking yeah, with, with Peter today. Yep, um, today. So we're going to take a, a dive on with, with him. And um, it's, it's going to be a really interesting sort of podcast with him and hear how good. he perceives it. It's always good to get different people's perspectives. So it, is. Um, it will be, it'll be really, really good. Yep. I'm we're glad excited. so many people asked in the comments on Rick's, can you get Peter on? It was fun just saying, yeah, we already have a schedule. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right, let's take a little dive into the question. Dive in, pal. Let's sort of see Matty Boy hit a few stripies. Oh. How, was, how was your... The first uh, swing of the day is going on a live stream. Oh, my yes. God. Help yes. Me. Oh! Uh, good. Practice yesterday. Yep. Just continuing to work on the same kind of stuff. I played... Um, Foresight has a par five challenge. Have you ever tried it? No. So you play four par fives at one of the courses. All right. And Pretty you see good. how low you can shoot. The current... The current uh, 
number one is seven three under. eagles and a birdie. Yeah, seven under. I got four under. I yeah. thought that was pretty damn good. Yeah, so, you know, basically, you know, I bet, Sorry, I did better than that. I got five under. Did three birdies really? in it. Yeah, they're short. Like, they're the one. Still one good, though. It's good. Yeah, I did it three times, and that was my best score. That, speaking of what Simon was saying, it's a really good way to practice. Because yeah. you hit driver, you hit some irons, you hit some woods, you chip a bit, yeah. you putt a bit. It, it's, um, it's, it's definitely good to apply that type of um, that type of practice versus obviously just uh, just standing just, there beating balls with your favorite seven iron. And I found myself doing that way too much. Yeah. So I was like, do something else for God's sake, yeah. anything yeah. else. Um, okay, so C, I've got a question here. Forged fan says C8 swing weight bad. Uh, depends who we're talking about. If you are a senior or a, maybe a junior golfer, lady golfer, definitely not bad. Right. If you are a, a tour player, if you are a, you know someone who swings with with serious speed, not great. Do not you want great. the updated speed on your? Yeah, on your why left not? Here? Yeah, that'd be great. And uh, can you throw what throw your little alignment? That looked like a great swing. Uh, but oh, it's, is it crooked? It's, yeah, it's crooked. Yeah, yeah. I think. It's just... Gotcha. Uh, Drew, is Matty going to do a hot melt on the freaky deaky or just stick with lead tape? Hot melt going into that bad boy. Uh, yeah, or do you think there's a weight we can get that will make it, like one of the Callaway weights that could make that work? I think you'll benefit from making the, it a bit. The, the head sure sort of not rotating as much. Okay. And if your strike does straight toe side, you'll have mass there. Mikey will be doing the hot melt. Michael will be on it. Um, Roy saying he loved the chat with, uh, with us and Rick. Good. Really enjoyed the informal kind of nature of it and the bit about the golf better challenge <laughs> that I was know, funny i know yeah we're, we're trying to convince them to franchise it to us we'll see um does foresight have a list of fitters that use the gc quad not fitters but they do have a list of people who have the technology oh do they okay yeah this is here's here's your thanks buddy um mizuno st 200g atmos blue 65 ball speed 151 carry 245 chain any change recommendations um, I, the one bit that's missing there is what do you launch it at, Josh? So let us know mm. what you launch it at. That would be good to know. That will tell me how, you know, 2,500 is great if your launch angle is 10. 2,500 is not great if your launch angle is 15. That's a good point. Right. Too much height. Aye. Um, Robert, if you went uh, to a shorter shaft or driver to get better dispersion, should the loft be changed to maximize carry distances? Not necessarily. I mean, you, you don't want to, you know, go shorter, then destabilize the, the golf ball. Um, you know, you, you kind of manage the situation. But, um, Robert, you know, there's a bunch of different things if you're going to go shorter. You know, making sure you've still got enough overall weight is important. Um, making sure the shaft doesn't get overly stiff. Uh, making sure the head weight is, is right so you're still loading the shaft appropriately. Um, Ian, using mode is 105 stiff on irons. What should I use on wedges? That's a great question. Mm. So, about um, so you could you could very easily use uh, 120 uh, stiff in the wedges. If you want to go something a little bit softer, you can maybe soft step that. Use eight iron shafts, you know, in, uh, in the 120 stiffs. That would get you a little bit more uh, sort of feel and a little bit more load in the tip section. Always good for some feel. Uh, would a uh, seven would be a good option for someone who has 115 mile an hour club head speed? Mm. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say so. Um, you know, that amount of club head speed with that amount of loft and the CG that far back is, is probably not a great combination. It's likely a moon ball. Yeah. But lots of other things to consider there uh, as well from a delivery perspective. Speed is one element of that. All right, all right, all right. Jeff is saying, Pete, love Pete. Mm. Yeah. I think um, everyone's, everyone here in, in the, the room is a Peter Finch fan. You know, we like his stuff. Yeah, well, definitely, yeah. Definitely doing it differently. Uh, I think, you know, what's cool about Pete is he's documenting his journey almost. It feels a bit more like him. He's, he's mm. maybe not going down the traditional, I'm going to review every product. Yeah, he does a little bit of that, but it does seem more focused on <clears throat> his playing career and coaching yeah. also. Um, I, think, I thought that was great. Yep. I thought that was really good. So I'm excited to hear how, uh, how he's been working at it. I know he was doing some 
so he was working really hard over the winter, it seemed. He really was. Doing some ground force stuff uh, with his coach. I saw uh, some stuff they were doing, uh, I think, on Swing Catalyst and Trackman. Okay. Really looking at his forces, and that's maybe something you can talk to him about, because I know you've done that yeah. session with Scott Lynn at the, uh, at the PGA show. I mean, it was eye-opening so. for me, so I'm curious what he yeah. saw that... I guess, influence what he decided to work yeah, on. Yeah, because you two can talk about, obviously, how you create significant force because mm -hmm. you both swing the club. You know, you can both get it to 120 and the driver swing speed. Yeah. Um, and I think Dr. Lynn talked about you using lateral it's, force. It's, um, yeah, too much, but yeah, you mostly know, lateral, lateral force. Lateral force, so obviously, you know, your three ways to generate ground force are vertical, rotational, lateral. Mm -hmm. um, so you are definitely more... Um, on the lateral side, Pete to me is someone who stays a little bit more central. He was probably, probably uses a lot of ro rotation, but probably trying to get a little bit of downforce, mm. you know, a little bit of pressure on uh, moving down in that, that transition. I think that's a safe assessment, yeah. He seemed like he rehearsed, I, he's got a little kind of Alex Noren rehearsal when I've been. Yeah, he does have a bit of Noren. Uh, do he's that one again. Try, just, I think he's trying, yeah. I mean, I've, when I watched Golf Better, he was doing a lot of kind of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I would assume he's trying to play some fades, trying yeah. to keep space, trying not to get stuck behind him. Seems like he, ha he likes to get the arms out in front of the body and keep the, the, keep the face a little bit on the right hand side, mm. a bit open. What tour player isn't trying to do that right now? Well, that's, so. that's generally the player with speed, that's, that's normally the, the yeah. key is is making sure that the club face is, is as neutral as possible. Yes. All right, our good pal, Roger Ortega, out mm. in the West Coast. Hope you're well, my man. Um, with stronger lofts, any thoughts to do fits with seven iron instead of six iron for many irons? That's a great question. We actually do that. Um, so the irons that are super strong, we do seven irons. Mm -hmm. um, the irons that are moder moderately strong are still mostly six irons. I wouldn't rule out uh, going to seven irons. Um, I've, I've kind of been a six iron guy and, and that's kind of where I've liked it most of uh, the, the years for me, but I wouldn't rule out going to seven irons. It could change in the, in the next few years, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, think, I think that could be. But, you know, thinking of the economics behind that, <laughs> seriously, there's a lot of six iron shafts in that wall. It well, be I a... say six iron shafts, there's a lot of, you know, shafts that would be standard length. We would just need to add some shorter options. It would require, yeah, you have to build up Probably what, 50 new shafts or so on the wall? Probably about that. Yeah, wouldn't, it wouldn't be crazy, but it's definitely a, it's a consideration. Yeah, not ideal. Tyler, good morning. Good morning to you, my friend. Um, Tyler is saying, starting early, you dirty dogs. Isn't that good? The boys, early. I don't think we've ever been early for anything. Nah, never early for anything. <laughs> this is the first house. for anything. And in the end, we were late for being early. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, we're ready. And I was like, oh, wait, you didn't set up any yeah, of the cameras. We were late for being early. Joe, our good pal Joe, is saying his ball striking is going to be impeccable coming out of the shutdown. Good to hear. I think a lot of people will be kind of coming out of a lot of repetition, hitting yep. into a net. Joe's saying his, he's no idea what his path and face is going to be, <laughs> but he's going to be flushing it. I love that. Who cares what it is if it's going straight? Who cares? And uh, Joe, uh, Joe's got his, his um, I can forget what head you're using, Joe, but I know you've got your VA nemesis coming. He's a G410 guy. G410. Yep. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. G410 plus, I think. Uh, okay. Christopher's asking, lead tape or hot melt to bump up swing weight? I mean, lead tape is a great option if you want to see if you like it and if it works. Hot melt is a great way to make it permanent yeah. and, and sort of change the acoustics. Most people do prefer those, those sort of dampened acoustics uh, that, that hot melt gives you. Kind of looking forward to what that Maverick will sound like with a bit. It's such a good sounding driver already. I'm yeah. a little worried that it will. It'll be good. It'll be good, eh? Freaky. You're confident? Okay. I believe you. Yeah, it'll be good. I believe you. Rocket launcher. A rocket the launcher. All right, Mark, guys, love the channel. Would you give higher priority to putter or driver fitting for the average golfer? Mm. Good question. Great question. Um, I weighed both of those up in, in very, very similar um, importance and I know you hit putter over twice as much as you hit driver but you start the hole with a driver you start yes. on the front foot you know or you start on the back foot so <laughs> I'm really big on best of both worlds do both yep. do both do a driver fit do a putter fit listen if, if budget is a problem 
put the purchase to one side for a second, but do yourself a favor and go through the process of at least knowing, because once you go through the process, you'll know yourself what's more important to you. Mm. You'll have the data that allows you to uh, make that, that sort of decision is do you buy a putter or do you buy a driver? That's a great point. Uh, or do you, you know, if it's really gonna help, you buy both. Yep, agree. All right, Justin is asking, how similar are Atmos Black 60TX and Tensei Pro White 60TX? I have the Atmos Black in Sim, um, but it feels a touch stiff. I mean, a lot of these shafts, I think you'll find the, um, the, the Tensei white a little bit soft on the handle. I, I can verify exactly where those two curves, um, you know, Atmos Black is not something we've done a whole lot with. Mm. Watch Matty Boy a second here while I give you a definitive answer to that one. I don't like Atmos, speculating. Atmos Black, tour spec and what? Tensei white? And Tensei white. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So Tensei white is supposed to be a bit softer than the handle? A little bit softer than the handle, yeah. Gotcha. Generally speaking, the shafts that are tip stiff are soft on the handle. That's, that's mm. a fairly common thing. That's true. Unless it's an Acra RPG. <laughs> it's like just yours, stiff it's everywhere. Just, just stiff. Just stiff. Doesn't feel stiff. How's the swing feeling, lad? Feels good. I'm trying to um, mix in a few draws and fades when I'm hitting balls. Just oh, to... look at you taking some of the Dyson's I advice. Know. I know. <laughs> yeah, I just, I got, I got, he, it just, it really, it really resonated with me when he said that. I'm just like, man, that's you. That's Why? you. I mean, why? Why have these guys on and, and let's you know, have the voice, you know, the experience if we're, not gonna, if we're not gonna use it and apply it? Well, that's the thing. I mean, it, I think hopefully our enthusiasm for what he said will come through and people will go, oh man, like that's something to listen to. Definitely. We definitely agreed with, with what he had to say. Well, he has a great story of um, when he sort of, when he, uh, was was playing a tournament out in Hong Kong and and he was he was you know hitting all the shots. Well, I love that story. Yeah, he is a brilliant story. That's about hitting, um, he was with a, a friend of his on the range at the Hong Kong Open and he went he was hitting all the different shots and it really kind of led to a, a great result for him that week. He won the tournament. Yep. And um, and that was because he felt like going into that week that like there wasn't a shot he couldn't hit. I think you hear that from Tiger too. Yeah, young Tiger especially, just yeah. hitting hitting crazy shots on the range, hitting crazy recovery shots. And you, and you do hear the opposite. So last year going into the the Masters, um, Claude Harmon tells a great story with Brooks Kepka that um, Kepka didn't have it that week at the Masters, and he he ended okay. up he, last he lost by one shot, didn't he? He was one shot behind Tiger. Okay. But at the start of the week, he was hitting it all over the map, wasn't hitting good His front nine was bad, wasn't it, on the first? And uh, yep, and he had to sort of gather it back together, but Claude Harmon sort of um, had to say to him, listen, let's, let's just, let's go back to hitting a fade. Let's just, that's the one shot we know He was trying to draw too have. much. He was just trying to play his flight and he didn't have control of his golf ball, but when he defaulted back to the shot he knows he can hit under the most pressure, yep. you can kind of find your confidence growing and coming back to you. And, you know, so even if you don't have all the shots available to you, Always have a safe shot. Yes. What What is that shot that you can depend on? Yeah, that's it. You know, what, what way can you hit it? If you've got the two-way miss going, it's really tough to oh, compete. Golf's a nightmare um, when you have two-way. Justin, ways. the, um, interestingly, the, the Tensei White is a little bit more curvy, a little bit more, mm. actually a fraction more butt stiff and Curvaceous. a little bit more tip soft. So Atmos uh, is- Wouldn't have it, expected that, eh? No, I, I mean, sometimes with these e, uh, EI profile readings, though, Matty, I have seen some, some little discrepancies in the butt readings, the butt okay. stiffness readings. So yep. it looks exceptionally butt stiff in the one that they, they read here. So now we are talking about a TX in the Tensei White versus an X in the, uh, the Atmos as well. Fair. So. so maybe the Xs are a little closer? Yep. So the, uh, the, t the Atmos Tour Spec Black is going to be a little bit soft on the butt, a little bit more tip stiff. That's why we use software. I was going to say, I think that's been a great addition, but yeah. Um, it's nice that you can just zip on there and give people it's those great, answers. Isn't it? Yeah. It's fantastic. Garrett, I want to switch to Project XLZ from regular Project X 65s. Hmm. Can you all do a test to compare the difference? I like the softer feel of the LZ. Uh, we, we can do it. I mean, I don't know how much it's going to mean to you though, Garrett, because ultimately you load it differently from Matt. So yep. one thing we've, we've seen from testing gears, we have, I have Matt at times make swings where he throws the, the angles out mm -hmm. on the downswing. And yep. I have ones where I feel like he, he really retains angles and, and downcocks a lot. 
and, 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 and basically the same guy with two different swings, the shaft does the opposite thing. One, one minute it kicks out and, and you know, unloads, the other one it, it kind of retains their load for a little bit longer and, and that affects obviously droop deflection, dynamic loft, uh, you know, all those different things. So we, we can do it, but the reality is how much that is going to help you. Yeah. We don't, we don't we'll have do to get to a point where we can make a video replicating that many swings, yeah. but that's further down the road. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. How's the swing feeling? Good? Feels good. Yeah. Yep. Do you want to come hit a few? Uh, yeah, I'll take a few more questions, then I'll go okay. come on round. Luca is asking, what do you think is the best all around wedge, all things considered, oh. uh, for 2020? It's a toughie. 2020 is pretty young still. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's impossible to. You can't. You can't not say Voki because I, I just don't know how. Okay, I'll pick one reason why I say Voki. Okay. The number of grinds, bounce, and loft options, mm -hmm. and the fact that they're available right and left-handed, makes it hard to say that that won't fit a crap load of people. Yeah. Like it's very hard to say that anyone has quite the same selection. Yeah. I know ping's very de uh, deep also, but for you to not fit into some kind of Voki at some point, different grind or loft would be pretty unlikely, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, tell you what, you know, obviously these conversations that, that go back and forth between ourselves and, and other channels and people, here's, here's a measure of who Simon Dyson is. Um, boys, absolute pleasure, thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm always here when you want someone to discuss anything with. Love All it. the best to you. Speak to you soon. It's the best. I mean, that, that's... Such a beauty. That is that's uncommon. I can, I can yeah, promise I agree you with that. That, that, yeah, that kind uncommon. of openness to, to communication. And, and in all honesty, that tells me one thing. He's going to be successful. Yeah. If, if you find someone who's that open with communication and, and wants to you know, learn you know, from other people and, and kind of share what he is learning, so true. He, he's on a pathway to, to you know a really successful career as a coach. I agree. He's one to really, really watch in coaching. Yeah. I mean, we have to say, this is not a guy we've ever met before either. No. I've literally I've never, never met him. never met Simon when I was in Europe, never once. Slid never into even, his DMs, that was about it. That, that was it. Well, yeah. you just, you can kind of get a sense of online and that's the beauty of social media. Now you get a sense of who someone is a little bit, I think, to some degree, uh, on, yeah. online. Um, I think, you know, Gary Vee had a great point, um, you know, social media exposes who we are in, in a way. It can, yeah. It can, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, because if, if you're, it may, maybe isn't all shown the true sense of you, but, you know, exposes who you, you know, kind of who you want to be. I think if you use it correctly, yeah. well, that's it. If you're a genuine person like Simon is, you make content that reflects who you are, Yeah. then I think, absolutely, you represent who you are very well. And then when you speak to him, you go, okay, that's the guy that I expected. Yeah. That being said, other people can use Instagram for the opposite, present a persona that isn't really them, yeah. and you meet them and go, who the hell is that? Yeah. Kind of thing. The good news for us so far hasn't happened to us. We, we haven't great. found that, have we? No, um, we've, yeah. we've really just, I think everyone we've had on so far, we've been, we've been really kind of enjoying just a genuine chat with, mm -hmm. with everyone, all yeah, the guests. It's good. it's good stuff. It is a good stuff. Okay, two more, then I'm switching with you. Easiest three wood off the deck. Sim Max, Maverick Max. Easiest off huh. the deck would be Maverick Max. Maverick Max, you could hit to the moon. Hit it out of All day. Yeah. Hit Even hit it out of a divot. Uh, Adam's saying 165 ball speed, 113 club head speed, 12 2 launch, 2600, 270 carry. Is that close to optimal? Uh, pretty darn close. Sounds you good. Could, you could be a little bit more optimized. Um, I mean, certainly, you know, someone like myself shares similar numbers to you, Adam, 165 ball speed. I carry it on average a, a good bit further than that, but... Um, Does it depend on what your definition of, of optimized is? Because there's distance optimized and there's yeah, accuracy that's, optimized, that's right? That's exactly it. And I think, in, in, you know, Adam's probably talking about, you know, because he's referencing distance, he's probably thinking about distance. True. Uh, in that sense, um, anything you suggest to get more distance without adding speed. Um, the the easy, easy solution to that is that the more you increase your launch, the, the more you lower your spin. You have a little bit of excess spin to play with. Mm. Um, so you can probably get that carry pitching up to the 290 range. Oh yeah. Yep. No, I've seen no you fly 290 plenty of times. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, 
that's that's kind of the window I'm I'm in right now is flying at kind of two eighty five, two ninety and definitely um, you are. And being right around that one sixty five speed. Absolutely. Alrighty. Um Stuart is asking, how can I find out the sorry guys, how Any can worse? I find out the swing weight of my driver? Um, mm -hmm. You're going to have to get to some with a swing weight machine, uh, go to a, a shop, a, a workshop, obviously right now is difficult, so you know, being able to do it from home, you, you probably can't do that, but no. have someone who has a, a, a swing weight machine, Stuart, should help you with that. Um, Paul, have you guys watched Kyle Berkshire's yes. recent videos and yes. what are your thoughts on his bag and use of a soft golf ball? have not seen any of that. Matthew, what's going on? I watched a couple. He started doing on-course vlogs. Good for him. Uh, yes, they're, they're pretty. So I, I they watched good? one. Yeah, they're good. I watched one yesterday. I think his first hole, it's like a 340-yard hole. He literally shows the pitch mark after. He almost he almost holed out on the first hole. He almost, almost, he almost albatross it. like Jesus. home on the first hole. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I don't. Um, I haven't watched enough of it to know what his aspirations are. Whether he wants to play tour golf, it kind of seems like he wants to get into uh, YouTube a bit, which I think is great. Yeah. I mean, to watch someone who swings comfortably 140 miles an hour, and, I'm, and when I say comfortably, like he's not going at it. Um, it's crazy, isn't it? It's pretty interesting. But like, he can play golf. It's not like he's incapable of playing golf. He yeah. actually, you know, he has a an on course game. So. Tons of people commented that recently, saying like, what do you think of what he's doing? I think it's good. I think it's great. Uh, okay. Were you just, you were right where you were, at? Yeah, Was just that... just with Paul's, uh, Paul. Paul's super chat there. Yes, perfect. Lovely. All right, I'm going to make them watch your first swing of the day, too. <laughs> little, right. little chop slice first one. So I always kind of try and start with some exaggerated intentions. So you start with like a seven iron and you start kind of... Well, yeah, because so I hit a few wedges earlier on, oh, so did, I've got okay. a little feel for where my swing is today. Yep. Um, so I'm going to make a few sort of exaggerated um, sort of pull cut swings for the first couple. Love it. So 170 is about 25 yards short of where I hit six iron, so I'm going to just hit some soft ones. Gotcha. Chunky ones. <laughs> Chris is asking, is Bryson DeChambeau okay? I don't know. Is he okay? You'd have to ask him. Is he, I, I would ask the question, is he not okay? No, I think he's doing What's okay. up with him? You mean in general? I think or? he's doing a little bit of Twitch streaming with um, some Call of Duty and such. Last I checked. People are adapting to the current situation. Um, I mean, I don't, I'm not sure. Maybe does it mean is he okay as like a, a person? or? Yeah, we don't know. Don't know. Hopefully it's not a reference to something bad happening to him recently, but as far as I know, he's just fine. We're not in the, the loop with that one. Uh, Dave is asking, he's got a CK Orange, the Pro, so the Pro, uh, the 10C. Mm -hmm. uh, when he was swinging 105 miles an hour, he had it in stiff. He's now about 110, 111. Is X kind of on his radar? I mean, the 10C Pro Orange is stiff as hell to begin It's the with. stiffest shaft that Mitsubishi offer. So it could really so play like an X in something else? It'll, it'll probably play, yeah, one flex of up. Okay. Stick with the stiff for now, Dave. Yeah, I would. Stick get, with Get plenty of headweight in there. Mm. George is asking, TXG versus Rick Shields and Peter Finch. That'll be great one day. Yeah. I think, you never know. I think a UK trip is pretty high on our priorities for when we're able to travel again so yeah. the question is how long can we go for and how many things can we incorporate while we're there but yeah that would be be a lot of fun a lot of fun jared's asking uh, he's close to scratch he wants to get fit um said he's already been fit for driver what else would you do ian would say putter putter wedges Putter or wedge is next. Putter or wedge is. Yep, putter or wedge is next. And you, can, you can take a, a large piece of your roundup if you do a driver, putter, and wedges. True. I mean, you hit a lot of shots with those, those clubs. You know? I also think, like, between, between driver and the short game, a lot of your enjoyment of the round comes there. Yeah. Like, if I go home and I've hit a lot of fairways and I've gotten up and down a lot, I feel quite good. If I do those two things crap and hit my irons well, I don't, I don't think I'm going to be in the greatest mood. 
Yeah, I completely agree that with that. That looked like a good swing. Yeah, that one felt pretty solid. What are the numbers looking like on the delivery today? Zero, six, four down. Oh, so just oh, neutral. Close to what you like, I yeah, think. Little small fades, I love to see that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The funny thing is with it is that was 89 miles an hour and it feels like I'm in slow motion. That's good. That's the that's the good thing with from a sequence standpoint. Yeah. If you if you're getting speed out of it, but it doesn't feel like you're putting anything into it, that's nice. That so, is, I think to me that's a huge indication of, of exactly what you said. Good yeah. sequence, low effort. Okay, from another Joe, Joe Lane, our pal Joe. Joe Lane. Uh, okay, this sounds familiar. I think we kind of touched on this, but maybe we didn't get the whole question answered for him. So okay. he's 105 swing speed, yep. aggressive, quick transition, bit of an early release, hits it high. An, an aggressive transition, but early release. Okay, that's, that's me. Okay, so do you mana DF or ZF? DF for sure. DF for sure. For Joe. sure. For sure. Or ZF if you were so inclined. I do find myself with golf stuff saying Z always. Do you? But like Z. Canada and the UK. It's yeah, I mean, I would, I would definitely say ZF. It's just the amount of times you hear Z in your day-to-day -day work, it's hard to like stop yourself and go Z. Yeah. I'd like to, I'd like to be loyal to my, my home language, but it's tough. Uh, Alex is asking if the chat with Pete will be live. No, it won't, Alex. It's going to be recorded. Um, we don't really edit these chats, so in a sense, it's kind of live, but um, they're done with Zoom, so we post the conversation onto YouTube, and then we post the audio onto a podcast. But uh, live streaming with Collins is a bit of a gamble because you never know when someone's connection might get lost, so we tend not to do it, except for Instagram Live. We do, uh, we do Instagram Live a fair amount now. Hey, from Jay. Jay's asking, he's got Project X six and a halfs in the irons. What driving iron shafts would you recommend? Ghost has got to be up there. Mm, the ghost. A ghosty. Nippon ghost. Could get into a, definitely a Tensei white mm -hmm. 100 TX would be nice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Acra TZ 595M5 would be nice. Um, I think the, the hazardous black, Ooh. again, you know, kind of matching up. Um, Six and a half. EI curves would be, would be quite a good one as well. Similar feel, I guess, eh? Yeah. All right. Brent is asking. Uh, for someone who would kind of be in the Nippon 120 space. Yep. Is a KBS Tour 120, is that a similar profile or are they? No, not, not a similar profile, but would, not a similar profile, but would be tested in the same. By the same person. Yeah, by the same person. A little, little bit to? more active in the tip section. Great feel to the KBS Tour. Okay. Signature kind of profile for them. Little higher balance point as well. So. Potentially the heads will feel a little bit lighter. Yeah, yeah. Nice okay. shaft when you're making clubs a little bit longer. Okay, yep. good. Some lovely notes. All right, do we have any tips for traveling with clubs? Would love to come visit for a fitting when things settle down. Yep, that's great. You would definitely bring your clubs, Josh, for a baseline. Um, tips for traveling with them, get yourself a golf travel bag. Many different companies make a good one. Club Glove, OGO, um, Ping. I have a Ping that I like. Um, yeah, don't cheap out on the bag. Um, get one of those, what are those called? The, the rod you put in there. Um, Whatever. There's a thing you can buy at your golf store that basically keeps the bag from being compressed yeah. and snapping your yeah, driver. Yeah, no, no. If you have an adjustable driver head, I would take it off and put it in the side pocket, but... What is that thing called? As I've learned in the last few years, traveling with your clubs is honestly, it's pretty low stress. Doesn't, uh, doesn't really require too much work. And the funny thing is when, when you stand and hit fades so much, and I'm a serial drawer of the golf ball, I'm having a hard time hitting it right to left. 
<laughs> I, I really hard time hitting the right Are you way. just leaving in the face open? Yeah, so I'm shifting the path really nicely. Yeah. The club is, is exactly where it needs to be. I just have a pattern for holding the face right now. Yeah. Um, I agree. It takes, it takes a couple of the... That's why I think like Tiger going back and forth, fade draw, fade draw, mm. hold the hole is such a rare talent. It's, you're yeah. right, it's tough. Probably something I need to do at speed. So the draw is something at speed. Mm. Helps you get the face release. Yeah. So, agree. That kind of helps me turn it over. Yeah, that looked good. It's the full beans there. It's two in the air. Tasty. Yeah, I saw that. PJ Open getting cancelled, or Canadian Open, sorry. It's unfortunate. <clears throat> Bought my papa, me and my brother got him tickets for Christmas, so it's a bummer, but it is what it is. There's a lot of stuff going by the wayside at the moment, so. I kind of, I, when I first read it, I thought, that absolutely sucks. Like, yeah. they're going to start playing golf again on the PJ Tour right around that time, and yeah. we're not, we're not going to get the Canadian Open, but they're going to do the New Orleans. Then you think of the logistics of crossing a border yeah. with, and you're like, okay. I think that's the main thing. It's sense. like, it's like it doesn't matter what's going on crossing the border, especially America into this, into Canada. Um, we're going to be pretty strict, I think, with our border as far as what our primo minister has been saying. So it's understandable. It's yep. a bummer, but there will always be next year. Uh, new member, Jay. Welcome, Jay. Hey, Jay. Jay's a longtime subscriber. Comments all the time. Good to see. Welcome, Jay. Will's asking, I got a 10-year-old driver, time for a fit. Sure as hell is. Mm. Um, he's talking about 10-year-old putters versus new putters. Do you think that's as significant as a, as a driver technology versus putter technology? If you were to go, get both fit? No. no. Not, not as. Drivers not, not have, the same. Drivers have come further, clearly. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah, lots of people chiming in about the Canadian Open. Yep, it is a bummer. Okay, Scott is switching from Modus 130X to Steel Fiber 110X. Ooh. Yeah, he's going way lighter. That's a tough change. So he said he's getting a lot of what sounds like kind of a lot of trappy sort of low spin shots, which I'm assuming is a, fa a face closure thing. Yeah, um, obviously, yeah. What else would you recommend? Uh, Scott, I'm assuming you want to go graphite, bud. That's what it sounds like. I would really lead probably Scott towards the Acra Tour Series line. Um, 125s yeah. and such? Something where you can kind of keep the... Yeah, we don't have the, we don't have the 125 on Oh, you don't? Okay. I was no. just going to show them what it looks like. So, yeah, the 125 would be nice. There's, yeah. there's, they've got the kind of the weave section in the butt, which is, is quite, you know, when you look at the wall thing, it's very heavy. Um, anytime you've got a weave, you know, you generally are lifting the balance point a little bit. Now, there is a titanium mesh in the tip section of that, which will, will kind of address or redress that, yep. that sort of weight. You like them? Going you too high. Them I love them. Ones. Great feel. Yeah. The one thing I think you'll, you'd actually, I think the Acrochat has felt better than the Modus 130 and the steel fiber. Really? Yeah, I think you'd Just really like it. smoother kind of nice balance feel. Yep. Okay. Uh, ben is asking if you go for a fitting somewhere, do you have to buy clubs or can you just no, get the information not. and go home? Yes, you absolutely can. You do not have but to buy clubs. one thing I will say is definitely it's, it's your information to do with as you please. Yeah. But at least discuss it with the, 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 the people because there may be specifics about the build yeah. that make it important that it's not just, okay, here's a prescription, go get it anywhere. Well, that, and you know? that's a good, I think that's very important to bring up. But there's two sides to the coin. It's like, I think people are scared of going to fitting because they feel like I have to go and I need to pay five grand to buy clubs. Yeah. That's, I mean, hopefully you go somewhere that isn't going to pressure you. Um, but what you're saying makes a lot of sense. It's not like get the list of clubs and just go find the cheapest yeah. reason to buy them. There is, there's reasons why... The fitter can recommend the correct build with the correct build standards. So, uh, that being said, yes, you can learn a lot from a fitting, so don't be afraid to go. Oh, plus oh, stripey. Darth Vader's. Bob is asking. Um, okay, so Bob's got a set of strong lofted irons. His pitching wedge is 43 degrees. Yeah. How many wedges would you recommend? I'd for go 48, 54, 60. 43, 43. 48, 50, 460. Okay, Bob. You heard it here first. Yep. So, yes, you would be playing an extra wedge. That is. Cool. You just stretch out the loft gaps a little bit. Yep. Yeah. Which makes sense anyway, right? Yeah. All right. 
So Joe that you recommended the DF to uh, in his driver, mm -hmm. he's asking about his fairway wood. Is a ZF a better fairway wood shaft? Yeah. Okay, so that's a yes. Um, his irons he's asking, dynamic old S400 soft stepped or elevate Tour X soft step? Depends what you do with the weight. Yeah. The additional S4 weight is way heavier. Key, way heavier. Okay. Um, yep. different, completely different profile as well. Apples and oranges. Joe, I would say the irons, you really would need to get in for a fit on those ones, bud. Uh, this is funny. So Rich is asking about the old Big Bertha C4. Um, that fastback shape that, that Callaway's brought back. Yeah, I remember the C4. Standard. Horrendous driver. It was a brutal. Oh. So speak, awesome. actually, let's, let's ask people right now, because I, I found something in my garage that I thought would be a funny video. Not funny, but interesting video. Yep. A couple years before I found myself in this building, I purchased this beauty. Whoa. GBB Alpha, featuring a gravity core uh -huh. with a Rombax. A Luke Donald-esque Luke Donald Rombax. Stiff Flex, another uh, wise purchase on my part. So we we're kind of thinking it'd be, what, seven years old? Yeah, about that. Interesting to see the difference between these Versus. two. Something that's been oh, something that's been fitted really well, Freaky nice deaky. shaft fitting, and then something a little older with a shaft that I ordered because I was a dummy and I didn't know what I was doing. So if you want to see that, fire some comments in. Um, if I see enough yeses, then we'll do it. If I don't, then we won't. Alan, new member, welcome, Alan. Welcome. Welcome, Al. Big Al. Big Al and big Sal. I'm sure if you're bigger than I am, Big Al. Uh, Ian is still, well, Ian will still be fitting in Toronto when the new location opens? Maybe one day a week. Okay, so Ian will mostly I'll be, be mostly the, out of Mississauga. Yeah, Ian will mostly fit in Mississauga when life gets back to normal and that shop gets open. So, But by the time, Jeremy, it's time for you to book, um, shoot us an email and we can clarify. But yeah, Ian will be... Doing fittings mostly in the Mississauga region, which is about 30 minutes west of here. Some questions about thoughts on sick putters? Yes, Good, putters. love them. I'm, yeah. I'm very interested in bringing them in here. Are you okay? Yeah. Well, that is an endorsement in and of itself. So if you're thinking about it, do it. They have a fitting center at Orange County National, if you're in the States. And apparently, in the next year, you could probably get fit for one here. Okay, Scott, I see your super chat. I don't see your question yet. Oh, here it is. Lovely. Uh, Scott was fit for a Tensi Pro Orange 70 TX in the driver. Ooh, boof, that is stout. Um, Tensi Pro Orange 80 TX in the three wood. Is that a bit? I, I mean, if there's right. enough, if, if the build is appropriate, would have he a lot of head more weight? than likely prefer a Tensi White in the three wood? Yeah, I would say so. Scott, look, at least try the white instead in the three wood. Unless you are trying to build a rebar three wood, then I would go for I it. I have had some success with it in fairway woods, 10 the orange, yet? yeah, some. Yeah. Gotcha. Definitely haven't seen many tour players using the orange in the three wood for what it's worth. <laughs> Brent is asking if we can make a personal plea to his wife about him buying some new irons. Okay, you ready for this, Brent? Please, Brent's wife, allow Brent to go get some new clubs. It's going to make him happier. He'll be a better husband. If he's a father, he'll be a better father. He's going to be just a better overall man for having those new clubs. It does not get any better than that. It doesn't get any better. Brent, good luck. All the best. Let us know if you end up getting him. All right. Bryce, that speed Bryce, up we're today. doing good. We're doing Gotta good, pal. Try oh, and get one seventy. Drive. Gotta Jeez. try and get one seventy, Matty boy. Oh. What was it? Six eight. Six seven. Oh boy. Lovely. Loving the high toe. Are you? <laughs> you need <laughs> just it. needing it. It's stable though. It is, this this driver is very stable for me. That's just that's totally when we fun, played that it? scramble the other day. I felt like a bunch of the best drives I hit were were right up there. in. They were up in that. High toe region nine, for sure. Nine degree still? Yeah. Open or no? Square. And toe weight? Toe weight. I want to like capture this moment because the next time I see you with that eight, 
No, it, it's it, always bad. It was a, it was it was interesting to try because, I, like I probably I think I'm two miles an hour faster ball speed with the eight. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, yeah. But it just I don't have it. I, I think I can't control it. If you wanted to like put on a range expedition yeah. or ex whatever the hell, jeez, exhibition. I'm, I'm not asleep. Exhibition. <laughs> The eight would be great. Your numbers would look amazing. You hit it further, but on the course, I think yeah. you and I are the same. Like a little more loft on the course is all night and day, and it's one degree of difference. Yeah, and it, but who it's, the hell cares, right? It's it makes so much difference. It's bizarre, different. but it really does. Yeah. All right, from the camera gear junkie. I'm also a camera gear junkie, but I'm not the camera gear junkie. Um, I, I'm 99% sure he's a YouTube member. I could be wrong though. Um, Probably was chatting with the boys about his driver. So lowered his loft on his M2 down to seven and a half. Gain speed, strike his middle, gain 20 yards on average. Do I see that often? I would say if your spin was way too high and you drastically improved your strike and you got less spin, then yeah, 20 yards is, I think it's awesome. But yeah, it can definitely happen. I mean, what, five, 600 RPMs of spin and a, and a couple of degrees of launch and, and a little bit of ball speed? It's 20 yards. 20 easy, yards. Right? Yeah. I'm glad, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you're a YouTube member and I'm hoping you were chatting with the fitting lads about that. So that's a great result. Glad to hear it. Uh, who will be the next Canadian major winner? Matt Bloy. I, I know, yeah, right. There's 170 there. Major tool award. Um, yeah, Brooke Henderson obviously excluded because she already oh, is yeah, and she so will win more because she is. Who's really going to sneak in there and win a major? Who's got the game? I mean, Hadwin seems to have a ton of upside. He really does. I mean, Nick Taylor's obviously capable on the right golf course. Yeah, Pebble. Um, and obviously, Mike uh, Gligic is, is a really capable player. I like his chances. He's working with uh, Gareth uh, Rafleski now and mm -hmm. that can't hurt your game, that's for sure. Yeah. So, I mean, those are the guys to watch. I mean, winning a major is is wild. That's so, why when Mike Weir won the Masters, Canada just about yeah. lost their marbles because it's yeah. not it's not something that's just going to happen all that often. So yeah, I do like Brooks' chances of winning some more though. It is really good to see her doing so damn well. It's awesome. All right. Uh, time we got here. Um, I'm going to make my first save your question request now. We've got a lot more to get through, so we will be... Dude, that looks really good. Yeah, driver's Jeez. decent. <laughs> um, we'll be live again on Monday, so please consider hanging on to your question because we probably won't get through another... more than another half an hour's worth. Come uh, and hit a few Matty Boyle. Okay. Jump in. Right there with Rich. Rich Clover's question when you're ready. Yeah, that's good, dude. Warm in here today. It's kind of like, you know those days when you go out and I it's... I turn the heat back on. It's, it's like a, you know, like a 80 degree or, or, you know, it's 24, 25 degrees. Yeah, just like feels like a nice warm day. I'm going to put it to... A little easier. I was, dude, I was freezing oh. during that pocket. Well, natural swing lube on a warm day, isn't there? It's not nice being cold. Oh, natural. All right. Rich. Oh, natural, he says. <laughs> I'll hit some drivers as well. Yes. Why the hell not? Current 2017 M2, hazardous black 70X, 9.5 turn down, 168 ball speed. Oof. Should I consider as an upgrade to this? Um, Rich, I think, I think something that would be really good for you to uh, look at as an upgrade would I definitely think Sim would be right in your wheelhouse. Mm. What I've found is I was always an M2 guy. I was always, you know, even dating back in TaylorMade drivers, I was always a burner guy, never a super quad guy. Super quad was the player's driver, you, right? Yeah, you had a technical product and you had a speed product right, from, right. from TaylorMade. Yep. And I was, I, was always the, I was always the burner guy, slightly bigger profile on the head, less techy, less screws, less weights. Mm. I think one thing you'll find with, with Sim, though, is that you get the best of, of both worlds with that. You get speed, you get tech adjustability, but you also get stability as well. It seems like Sim Max is more of a spin profile change, not really like a forgiveness. Yeah. I, I think it is a bit more forgiving. Yeah. But it's definitely a little bit more, a little bit more forgiveness because you're taking the weight from that front track, yeah. and you're placing it all the way in but the like back. M5 versus M6 was yeah. a huge difference. I thought, like, yeah. I couldn't hit M5 I to know, save my life, and M6 that. was an easier yeah. deal. But no, I agree. I think Sim will fit a, a ton a of people. Nice little Sim. Sim. 
Are you set on that shaft? Are we going to have matching drivers, basically? We are going to have matching right. drivers. Yes. We need to get our orders in. <laughs> the Acro boys have, have uh, sent a little note out about yours. Lovely. Lovely. Delighted that you've chosen the, the Acro wand. Well, I'm delighted with it, so. Um, okay, Kyle, good question. What has more impact on lowering driver spin and launch, weights forward mm. or loft down? Oh. Very good question. Great question. Very, very good question. The, the loft down will guarantee it. Now, if the strike is, is <laughs> in the middle of the head or, you know, is in the right spot, all things being equal. But, you know, moving CG is, is, always, is always a variable. So how the shaft reacts relative to, or the, how the head reacts relative to the CG placement with the shaft <laughs> axis is, uh, is, is the key there. So I would always say, always general rule of thumb, if I'm trying to lower spin, I, I would like to go loft down first. Mm. Um, but it just depends on the other things around it. How is, how is launch, um, you know, and that sort of thing. If it's the same head, for sure, the loft. Remember, remember um, it was one of the best videos I think we ever did. We should redo it just because it was so long ago. Mm. Um, CG location versus loft. Yeah. I think we did like G400 Max 8. Yeah. And like Rogue Sub-Zero 10.5. 10 and, and, yeah. and like the 10.5 was like, Way flatter. Yeah, that was a good video. So we should, really we should good update video. it with like newer stuff. So I think it's it's an important message yeah. for for people all times just to not not you know always rely on uh, moving sort of weight and things like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, freaky deaky, freaky deaky. How was driver swing feeling yesterday? Good. The the new tr like the nine, using just what we were talking about using loft is the key. I think the reason I struggled a bit when we were playing Pebble is I just, on course, I need a bit of loft. It's perfect on the range. Remember when you had it at eight? Yeah. Like dead perfect in that fitting video? On the course, I need a little bit of, I need a bit of loft. Just to help me. Hey guys, long time watcher, but a new member today. Yes, that hello. deserves a glockenspiel. Welcome. Welcome. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Hello All right, and welcome. Jack. Um, I have a nine degree epic set to 10 oh. with 10 to blue 65 stiff. Strike is sporadic, but when <laughs> I strike it well, I'm around 160 ball speed. Lovely. Shaft too soft. Quite likely, um, if you're 160 ball speed, you're probably get your club head speed. On GC quad, you'd be around about a 110 guy, maybe like a 17, 18 guy on, uh, on track man. Yeah, I would say you could tighten that strike dispersion. We've seen that quite a lot with oh. shaft fitting, haven't we, Matty? Usually, kind of the, the shaft that isn't super suitable for me versus the one that is, is what, three miles an hour? Yeah. Something like that. Jared is asking, could you go in depth on fast players not using fast irons? I can, but I'd need to do it in a video. Mm. Um, you know, to go in depth is, is kind of not, you know, as you, I'm sure you will appreciate, Jared, it's not really the medium that we have the option for. If, if you want me to go into depth on that, I'm going to have to give you multiple examples. I'm going to have to get Matt to hit both. I'm going to have to use different lofts. And, you know, and, and I'm also going to have to give you the variable, which is really spin. True. Spin, spin, ball speed retention with spin vari variance is, the, is why these irons become uh, a little bit dodgy. Yep. So you can drop 2,000 RPMs of spin. You all, all of a sudden pick up 20 extra yards and you fly the green into the out of bounds at the back. So mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's for a video. Pretty good video, yeah. It would be. That was the nutshell edition, but. Um, let's see, let's see. What else have we got? Some good. Oh, busy, busy. I mean, we're halfway down the list here. Yeah, that's why I said people I need to hang on. Yeah, hang on time. with the hang on with the questions. Yep. Just have to speed through them a little yeah, bit. Guys, it's good though. Love, love, love when it. There's this much going on. Um, and a boy, Matty, it's coming back. Lovely smoothies. Just really trying to get my Smooth. tempo and stuff dialed in before I try to push on any of these. Love it. Uh, okay, Corey. Hey guys, C Taper 130X and my 785s, one inch over standard. Oof, meaty. Okay. What would be a good shaft to fit? Um, shaft wedge flex is confusing. I think uh, something like a, a KBS Tour uh, would be a really nice one in, in wedges not quite as soft in the tip section as like a high rev or something like that. Even, even the 610 uh, KBS, if you want to stay in the family. Is that what those spinny wedge shafts are, just soft tip? Yeah. To give you more loft? Yep. Interesting, eh? 
I always wonder what the hell those were. Mm. Does Dynamic Gold make those anymore, spinners? Spinners, well, spinner was interesting because spinner was actually softening under the handle. Really? Uh, yeah, because you remember where it got the, the wall thickness got really narrow in the spinner, so. Interesting. It'd be a good one to get in and uh, yeah, see if it actually makes do a little bit of that testing. Would be. Andrew, 112, swing speed. Um, higher spin, but does well with the old Matrix Black Tie 7M3. Haven't found a good shaft to replace it. Softer midsection keeps the handle forward. Softer midsection keep handle forward, 8.3. Okay, I'm not sure where the question is in that. Softer midsection, keep handle forward, 8.5 TS3, bit steep in the swing. Are you looking for a shaft to replace that? In, in, um, Always remember you can send a follow-up later, guys, if you need to. Yeah, I mean, 8.5 TS3 is a great head. It's, it's not the, the furthest CG. It's pretty balanced in terms of its overall performance. Mm. Um, I think maybe go with something... Go into you know, a nice replacement for that would be like an Acra TZ575 M5. That would be a really, really nice one to try. Pretty stout, um, Andrew, um, that one, but the torque is a little bit higher in that shaft. So you're playing a shaft that doesn't feel stiff, but it plays pretty stout. It'd be interesting to see if the dynamic loft is stabilized a little bit. I'm hitting a couple gravity cores here. Look at this action. <laughs> this will be the test to see whether this is worth making a video of. Okay. You guys are going to see it live and in person. It better not be good. Well, it sounds pretty good, eh? That's saying good. Not bad. <laughs> I don't know why I thought it was going to be loud. Uh, A loose weight going, but otherwise fine. Gravity core. Ignacio, torque effects to dynamic lie angle. Um, nothing, nothing really concrete to kind of tell you on that one. Mm -hmm. Not, it's not with, with certain with downward deflection in that axis. Uh, obviously, torque more um, influential in the rotation. That looked good. It's not toy. Toy one, yeah. It's not bad, this driver. It just looks so small. Tiny, eh? I can't get over how small it looks. Tiny. Yeah, so I, nothing, really to, nothing really to say. I, what, how I answer this one, Ignacio, is there are so many other things that affect dynamic lie. Torque wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't for me be one of the things I would be thinking about because it's, it's not really something that we can... Uh, we can test it, but we, we can't really... We can't really isolate it. Is isolate that the word? it, yeah, probably that'd be it. But you know, I'm going to look at head weight. I'm going to look at shaft profile. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to look at the way the player loads the, the shaft specifically. So lots of other things to think about. Prime example is that Acro RPG. It's a higher torque shaft. We yeah. did hit some on gears, and it was not toe down. No. It was no. the most toe up. Very good point. So. Look at how it reads the the head. One twenty seven. Uh, <laughs> I was. Geez. I chipped it. So it does, the quad does not know what's going on with Doesn't that. <laughs> sea Dog, morning gents. During Matt's final driver sea fitting, dog. he was using, the, he was back to using the Z-Star XV. Thought he was going to play the Bridgestone BX. Just for the video. We had fresh golf balls. Yeah, we, we had fresh golf balls and we also wanted to keep it consistent with the bracket. That's true. I told right? That. So it's a better answer, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and, and make sure that it's an apples to apples test. Now, whether Matty goes on and obviously tests other golf balls, which you are going to. Yeah. Um, it's also important to say a lot of these balls are pretty damn similar on the driver. I'm not so gonna, similar. I'm not choosing a ball based on the driver yeah. by any means. It'll be based on the mid iron. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. I had a couple wedgies. Would you fire me to like sure. 60 got? yards? 60. I'm going to work on that shot Oof. a bit. I know. Work on that shot for a Eddie's few asking. Um, I know you guys did a PXG Gen 2 review last year with the new lower loft, with the new lower price point of 295. Any chance you get Matty to demo again? Yeah, so the PXG lowered their price point. I think that's really cool. 295. 295 USD. Oh, I think it was a lefty thing. It was literally a lefty sale. Ah. <laughs> literally the Fire first sale one. Sale at the back of PXG. <laughs> 
Yeah, Obviously, I mean, they had some stock. I would, <laughs> I would assume they I would had imagine. a bit of inventory. I'm sure there's a Gen 3, but you know, even the Gen 3 irons are now uh, have come down a lot in price. Oh, go on. Um, yeah, the Gen 3 is prototype is out there. We've seen the prototype, and yeah, not in person, have. but I saw it on someone was using it on tour. Some lad. Sam Grace, do you all think because of the economy? Golf prices, both used and new, will drop for a few years. I do not. I think no. the, almost the opposite is going to likely yeah. to happen. Yeah. Lower volume gonna, means higher yeah. price. Yep. Margins generally uh, will will they'll try they'll go up. If volume is going to go down, margins will need to go up. That's unfortunately how it works. It, it doesn't really work if they sell less of them and <laughs> they make less money. Hopefully, best case scenario, they'll just stay the same. That yeah. would be that would be nice. Um, did anyone want to see that great Big Bertha video? Did you see anything in there? Have not seen it. Look anything. on the, the live screen. I'm just curious. Or we can look later. If it's a bunch of no's, then we'll know not to waste our time. Hey, okay, good at these for our scrambles, pal. Oscar's trying to sh ship a raccoon to someone. <laughs> Why would you do that? Better not be us. Um. We will not accept delivery. Go in. You dirty dog. Stephen is asking, hi gents, what, what was the reason for fitting Matty into the standard Maverick versus the Sub-Zero version, given his speed, launch angle, spin rates? More forgiveness. Go to the bracket. You got it, you got it. You gotta watch it. I don't need low spin. Steven. Or maybe Stephen's a newbie to the channel and mm -hmm. doesn't realize you're... <laughs> Aversion to low spin driver heads. I hate low spin and they hate me right back. Yeah. Whisker is saying home haircuts. Do you <laughs> go with the greens, fairy rough first cut, rough second cut, or the Shinnecock special? Should I opt for the striping? <laughs> yes to all of the above. Just depends. Is anyone going to see you for the next month? If they're not, then do whatever the hell you want. Yeah, that's so true. Al264 has a Chichibu shaft. What is that? Uh, that is a graphite design, super lightweight shaft, hmm. which is a... Sounds like a breed of dog. Nod <laughs> to the region where they're made in okay. Japan, Japan, Chichibu. Lovely. Um, good speed, but only with a slight hook bias. Is that normal for a light shaft of 43 grams? Uh, would, would certainly be expected if you've got good speed chichibu is is designed for the, the slower speed market it's catchy that name chichibu uh, let's see i'm gonna try and catch up a little bit here all right speed round there's a lot of haircut chat uh, <laughs> raymond fsx challenge soon sure i think we're we're reasonably decent with our games right now we could probably get a little bit of that action Feel confident we could both get some scores in the 40s and maybe someone could spike up in the 50s. Yep. Did Chris give you guys any hints as to what Mizuno has coming this fall? He did. Yep. Uh, I think it's safe to say a JPX line is in the, uh, in the offing. Yep. Hey guys, thoughts on blending a Simmax hybrid with P790s for hybrid for four iron? Are the hybrids hotter in general? Matty, you're using a Simmax right Sorry, now. Sorry, I, I, I missed part no of that. No worries. Thoughts on blending Simmax hybrids yep. into P790s. Oh. Four hybrid for four iron, like for like. Uh, the four hybrid's going to go a little further. It's going to go a little bit higher, yeah. certainly. Spin a bit more, it's going to have more ball speed. Yep. Um, yep. I, Depends would say, yeah. I would say just don't get stuck on that exact fit. Like mm. if you can be flexible, maybe go a little shorter on the shaft. Yep. Use the four as 22 sure. degrees. Yeah, maybe move four. Maybe Actually, you know what? Three iron length, four hybrid head. And I can do a better job than that. That one you built mm -hmm. goes the same distance as my four iron. There you go. So, yes, you can definitely yeah. go 22 degree. What is that, 39 and a half inches? Mm -hmm. your, uh, yeah, your four iron is 38 and a half inches. Sorry, the, one, the ghost one here, this guy. This is, uh, this is about 38 and a half. Okay, 30, so if, 30, 30 not saying you have to buy this exact configuration, but a heavier, shorter but you can. hybrido shaft, you can purchase it from TXG. Uh, in the four would be a great choice, yeah. All righty. It would be a lot more stable than a four iron, that's for damn sure. On what level, handicap level, does putter fitting start to make sense? Florian, at every level. I've never met someone who doesn't need to improve their putting, so on every level. All right. 
Uh, what do you guys think of the Cobra Forge Tour irons? I think Cobra make a great product, great iron. Um, something definitely worth trying. Um, oh, there's a good one, Justin. <laughs> Favourite question of the day. If you guys are going to do a UK trip, maybe some course vlogs on the courses Ian grew up on. What's that, Helensboro, that one? What a course. <laughs> what a place. <laughs> oh, Am I going to need to leave my, leave my wallet in the car at that place? <laughs> you maybe need to leave your... Leave your morals, leave your wallet. <laughs> your morals. Leave it all behind. You're in for a big day and an even bigger night. What is the what is the course that they filmed the still game golf episode on? Do you know? Oh, it's like a little public course in Glasgow. You should play that. And then I'll get shot. The Neds out there shooting, throwing crap at us. Golf balls. The Matty boy working in his little 60 yarders. Yes. All right. Let's How are we doing? Let's see. If you want to switch back, let me know. You want to hit some buttons? No, buttons? no, you're good. <laughs> Young Michael. Mikey. Fraz hitting seeds must be getting the itch. <laughs> I have no question. More of an itch to play this game than I've had in a long time. And I can tell you why. I said to, to Tracy this the other night, I'm researching golf clubs in a way I've not done since I first started, took up the game. Okay. I yeah. like everything about them. Um, and obviously in a different way now because I have a much deeper knowledge base than I ever had when I first started but um, like details upon details on, on certain clubs like building different bags mm. and thinking mm. about different ways to, to play you feel like you got kind of your initial spark back for golf I feel like I have I yeah. love that I think it's, it's like cool. anything else you know when, when you can't have something you want it more it's true yeah you want the other kids beach ball in, yeah, yeah. in kindergarten or yep. whatever so um, but the, the other thing is as well I think Hitting at half decent is, is definitely a, a part of wanting to play more. No I one agree. likes going out and playing. The more junk. I see you hitting a couple balls in here, and I, you've had a good session, the more I see you come in a little early and like, oh, I'm going to hit a couple and like yeah. squeeze a few in, I can see that. Like, it definitely has been noticeable to me that you're more interested in playing. That's for sure. Good. You need a home base for 2020. Hey, Matty boy, did you order your net yet? Did I order what? Your net, your home net. Uh, no, we got to talk about that today. So, guys, there's... There's, um, we, we have a few requests for that. We have a few requests, and we also are going to... Uh, we, I was on the, on the way in this morning, I was chatting to one of our suppliers who has a host of home uh, training aids. Mm. Refluski rulers, Refluski putting cups, uh, the putt-out training aid, um, putting mats, hitting mats, nets. That catalyst? Yeah. Yep. We're going to put a, a, a link to, to where you guys can get that. Um, and. Sweet. You know, I think there'll be some really, and we'll review them. We'll we'll show you how to use them. That's a great uh, idea. And, and do some stuff like that. So sure, it'll be pretty cool. Yeah. So stay tuned. We'll get organized. Whisker. It appears the THG director of operations has cleaned up Mr. Fraser's hair. <laughs> she subtly. Has. She's. She did a good job. She's done a nice job. Shout out. So I was I was crapping myself while she was doing <laughs> it, but <laughs> I was afraid to ask you to be honest. Did you get hair cut? I I did. Safe to say it's not as wild as a Johnny Wonder haircut. No, I don't think anyone... If any of our friends know Johnny Wonder, she never went a Johnny Wonder wild on it. <laughs> that was... That's now a thing. I oh, literally... Oh, go in! Oh! Yeah, <laughs> I'm scrolling through Instagram I'm like, oh, same old, same old. I'm like, whoa, what that is that? Is, yeah, that's now a thing. Johnny Wonder <laughs> wild. I thought that was a, a progress photo of him shaving his whole head. I didn't yeah. realize he was leaving I know. the mohawk in the middle. I, I think we need to send help. He's, he's going to be a cast member on Mad Max too, I think. <laughs> Gareth is saying, uh, even in gents in the UK, any experience of Seracote? I'm pronouncing that right. Never heard of it, whatever it is. What is it? C-E-R-A-K-O-T-E. -E. I guess that's Seracote. I've never... Well, I'll Google it. Let me, uh, let me, let me get on the kind of Google paint. <laughs> Seracote. Don't know what that is. Got an old favourite MP57 with, uh, looks a bit tatty and I would love to give them. It's a coating, it's a ceramic coating. It sounded like a coating, it really did. Never heard of it, no idea, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> we, we do have a, a, a customer though that got his, his PXG irons oh, that's right. with Project X 6.5 wrapped. Mikey loved this job. I think Mikey wants to do more of this. Mikey wants to do more of that. If anyone has a, has a build request and they would like Mike to wrap the shafts. Matty's just about lost his mind over there. 
Well, if anyone wants Mike oh, to Mike wrap God. the shaft in a nice, like, <laughs> carbon or, like, high gloss gold, oh. something like, he just loves that heat application and put it on the shaft. I'm it's, not even sure he wants to charge for his, his favorite thing. <laughs> that might be the hardest I've laughed. When I asked Mikey about that, he's like, let me tell you, how much time you got? Oh, here's a good one. Because I was thinking about this just as we were... Uh, we were talking about hitting some balls. Mm -hmm. George is asking, what are your normal warm-up routines? Mm -hmm. uh, George loves the channel, and thanks for keeping them sane. Thanks, you George. guys are keeping us sane, George. Yeah, that's... We are thankful to you. I promise as much as, as you are thankful to us. So more. Thanks for everyone for joining us. Um, what's your warm-up routine, Matty boy? Um, a bit Miguel Angel Jimenez oriented, a little few little knee Deep shuffles. Lunges. There, I mean, at, Deep at the moment, there is no stretching or anything. I should probably get into this. I don't know what to do, but yeah. no, I just, I just, I basically take, I don't try to hit the same club every time, so I don't wear it out, but it's yeah. like nine or eight or seven iron. Yeah. I make like a bunch of 60% swings with whatever I'm working mm -hmm. on. And then I try to move up to full speed. Then I hit some longer irons, hit some drivers, then some wedges. Yeah. It needs, it all needs a look. It all needs a look. In terms of like what I should be doing on the range, I, I could probably work on that quite a bit. One thing you guys maybe see when we come on and do the Q and A's and if, if I start answering some questions and Matty hits some balls and then we flip uh, over rolls, the first thing I do is swing super speed sticks. Yeah, that's right, you do loosen up with yeah, those. Yeah, so I, I loosen up with those. I, I pick the light one, I make a few swings mm -hmm. and I build up probably from like 40% up to about 80%. You're as slow as 40%? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I make some very light ones. My body feels terrible the first, first few swings I make. I agree with that. I'm so always I, the same way. I'm always looking for sequence. I don't try to force the speed because my sequence will be bad if I do that. So true. So I'll go 40 to 80%. Then I switch and go left-handed. Um, and I, I really focus when I'm doing it left-handed on the sequence. I, I try to feel where the club is sort of loading more. I really try to, because that mm. tells me that if I'm... If I'm working the proper sequence, the club should be loading a lot. True. Uh, and I try to make sure I'm not just making left-handed swings thoughtlessly. Do you like super speed as a warm-up routine? If you're, I'm not saying, well, I am saying. Would you buy them if you're not going to do the full program? Just use them as a nice little warm-up. Yeah, still definitely. worth it. Yeah, I think I think it's. Great I, I think for it's that. a good idea because the reality is not everyone's going to do the yeah. full, um, whatever they call them, protocols, right? Exactly. Getting to 60 yards today, and I died. Oh, uh, Stephen, thoughts on Acra TZ 565 M5s versus Fujikura Pro 2.0 Tour Spec? Love them both. Um, higher balance point on the Fuji Pro 2.0 Tour Spec, a little higher balance point. Uh, TZ5 would be one of the stiffest profiles that we have on the wall, but higher torque, so it's a real great stable shaft, but feels fantastic, a shaft I love. Uh, really, really. I like didn't that. know TZ5 was one of the stiffer ones. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's really quite tip yeah. stiff. Lovely. Yeah, Matty, just striping these little wedges. Tell you, there's a scramble happening today if he's hitting wedges like this because the boys could go deep. So much pressure. That's the best I felt from 60 yards in a while, though. Chippy. All right, let's see here, Bobby boy. Um, on my question the other day, um, I'd had a Rory driver, big cat irons. Oh, from his question. So yeah. Bobby asked us, like, who's, who, oh. as a driver of the golf ball, iron play. So Bobby would go Rory with the driver, Big Cat the iron, Shane Lowry with the wedges. That's a, it's an underrated Sneaky one. one. Guy gets up and down from everywhere. So. Gareth Rafluski would tell us that's one of the best short games on the tour. And Ricky with the putter. So he's same okay. as us. So three out of four, same as what we would have yeah, said. I think, Shane, I think there's a lot of people you could go with on the wedges. Some people chimed in with Zach Johnson, mm -hmm. a few with Phil also. So all good choices. Justin James is six foot three and a strong swing. Rogue Max 80X in his current three wood, uh, have been fitted to an Evo six tour shaft uh, for a seven three wood. Is this okay? <sighs> yes, uh, I would say that that is okay. Um, the the Speeder Evo range is, is really really good stuff. Really high quality sort of signature range by Fuji. Really, really good stuff. Without watching you hit it, um, I would th say it's it's a good option if you've been playing a Rogue Max 85X. Okay, pal, no problem. Leave me and my pals. Uh, thoughts on the Aldo La Rogue White? I hope I do this. Thoughts on the Aldo La Rogue White 75X? 
at 105. Yeah, fine, uh, Auntie, that would be, that'd be a good option for you. So you're probably 105 driver, you're probably 108, 109 um, with the, the big stick. So yeah, that would be it's definitely in the wheelhouse. John, why is there never any talk of the Cobra Forge Tour irons? I feel like they're sneaky good. Sneaky good is right. You know, their Cobra irons are, are definitely not the first off the, that roll off the tongue for most people, but they make a great product. So, you know, popularity, um, you know, you look at market share, they're, they're just not one of the first ones. This, this, this competition's super deep. Everyone makes good product now, that's the reality. I mean, you know, you, you go down and you go look at Haywood Irons, you know, unbelievable value for the, uh, for the price. So you could probably say that about 10 other brands that they have an iron that isn't talked about enough. I mean, obviously, John, you're someone who likes that iron, so you've got a, an affinity to that. Good, it's, it's, a great, it's a great product, a great product. Right, Daniel, uh, when you mentioned tip mid sections, for flex, does that include rotation, face open, close? Also, thanks for the uh, Sasha McKenzie recommendation. Tried some tips and saw a seven to 10 mile an hour improvement. Yeah, I'm, I'm delighted you, you saw that, Daniel. I mean, I saw the same thing. I uh, saw a five mile an hour, pretty much an instant five mile an hour ball speed jump uh, when I tried um, some of the things from, from that session. Guys, if you don't know what I'm talking about with Daniel here, uh, Andrew Rice, in his learning series, his lockdown learning series. You can find it on YouTube. Go to Andrew Rice's golf channel. You can find his, his episode. One of the first ones he done, maybe episode five or six with Sasho McKenzie. They talked a lot about application of speed and how to get more speed out the golf swing, where speed sources come from. And uh, he talked about some specific things with regards to you know pulling on the lead shoulder and creating additional pull and stretch. And that's a really good one for increasing ball speed. I saw the same thing as Daniel. Um, when we're talking about tip mid section flexes, no, we're talking about the, the breakdown of the profile. So the, the butt section stiffness, the mid section stiffness, the tip section stiffness, and, and how each of those three sections come together to create an EI profile. Each of them will make the shaft feel and, and load and play differently. So that's more of a recommendation for that. Um, let's see, let's see. Stephen, closure rate for GC quad important. What does it indicate? Not as important as what we found it to be um, as, as well, actually with gears. One thing with, with closure rate is you can, you can hit a shot that goes on the fade side and have a high closure rate. Mm. Which is, a, which is an interesting one. Whereas we don't see that as much with, with, with uh, gears. Generally speaking, when we're in gears and we look at things like grip roll and closure yeah. rate and things like that, it's a little bit more direct correlation to what I've seen with the ball flight to be. Had a hard time kind of getting anything usable out of closure rate, eh? Like I had a hard time kind of saying like, yeah. what does that shot mean? What I've, I've shot not, mean? Really, um, not really had seen someone uh, get a good grasp on, on the, application of closure rate. Mitch, thoughts on the PGA Tour resuming in June? I'm excited for it, but want everyone to say, stay safe. I mean, you know, opinions are not worth an awful lot. Mm -hmm. um, would I like to see it come back in June from an entertainment standpoint? Yes, mm -hmm. I think it's potentially dangerous. Yes, yeah. uh, you it's know, fair. trying, you know, Peter Costas was saying on Twitter, He's like, you cannot have social distancing and stage a PGA Tour event. Yeah, you know how many hundreds of people are involved it. in making that thing? You Setting the it. TV uh, broadcast yeah. up? Like, good luck. A lot of people traveling together, lots of people doing that sort of thing, so. It's a nightmare. Interesting. Uh, did you see the stuff about Tiger and Phil potentially doing a, a match? Yeah, I had heard that a little while so ago. So something they could do, even that though, like the number of people that would have to work on that broadcast, I don't know how people keep their distance no. in that case, yeah. it's tough. For charity, um, obviously, I'll mention it was for charity. Super chat. 11 yard gaps um, from pitch and wedge to six iron. Um, and then the gapping gets progressively less uh, as it gets down into five and four iron. They get, the gaps get narrower, so they go down to nine yards and then six yards. Hmm. Modus 120s. Want to, you want a two degree? 
neutral, two degree neutral path. I'm not sure what that means. Lighter shafts or four iron utility to help better gapping. I think you could definitely benefit from what we've been talking about, which is you probably could, your gap in between your six and your five looks close. I would maybe strengthen the, this, uh, the five iron one degree just to stretch that out a little bit. And then what you could probably get is a four uh, hybrid uh, or four utility in place, something that you get a little bit more ball speed. CG gets a little bit lower, something that will help you launch it a little bit more. What we tend to see is in the, the average apex is a driver three wood and then into the irons and then, or sorry, into the hybrids. And as you get in long irons, there's a dip in the height of the apex. So trying to, it's one thing I work on a lot with the students is trying to keep that apex really consistent. And that's when I go to other clubs in order to, to do that. Makes a lot of sense. Matty Boy's got a nice little beverage going on here. He's not adulting today. I'm not adulting today. Put our uh, custom beverage emoji up, hold on. Plus. That's a technical thing for me. Oh, on that badge. Sure, I was, I was, I wasn't giving you the. Uh, you have to do it over here. If anyone's wondering why we made a member exclusive emoji that looks like the one you're about to see, it's awesome. Is it represents the potions that we drink to keep the potion in motion? Okay. <laughs> the motion of the potion. <laughs> Trying to get the last of the super chats. We yep. always like to make sure we get those. I don't want to miss anybody's. Uh, recently got fit for a sim titanium ferroid with an Evolution 6 and 5 them, but didn't realize that the shaft was 400 plus. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, no, that's, that's, uh, that's the problem. Uh, any similar um, cheaper shaft profiles? We, we haven't worked with the Evo 6. Um, we don't have it as part of our matrix, so really trying to give you something that's... Um, here, I don't want you to leave with nothing here. Do me a favor, um, email info at txg.ca with a copy of your question, your name, and, and just, I'll get you an answer. Um, you. I don't want to get you nothing. Yep. Email, uh, info at txg.ca. Um, Brent, KBS Tour Flighted, close to true temperature concept. Oh, so it's going back a while. Um, to a concept S3, 26, uh, for constant weight, flighted, what replaced accuracy? I suppose a few questions in there. <laughs> um, tour concept is, is not something I worked with at the same time as, as tour flighted. I actually haven't worked with, with KBS tour uh, flighted shafts. Obviously the flighted concept in that the uh, stiffness of the, the shaft varies so that it helps launch a long iron and helps flatten the, f the flight of a, a short iron. Um, you know, good, certainly a good, good concept. I haven't worked KBS with them closely enough, in all honesty. Uh, what replaced CS1? Um, Nothing really uh, replaced CS1 as a direct replacement. I mean, you had the, the 300 series, the 400 series. I loved the 400 series. We still have a bunch in stock, actually. Uh, of the Backers? Course. Yeah. yeah it's good you love those, eh? Yeah, that was the good. shaft of choice for um, TXG Sessions, Orlando. Uh, that was the... FX? That was the FX. So this was the concept series. Oh, sorry, concept series. So this was series. the first shaft developed using sort of S3... Um, data and information phenomenal. That was oh, the one that sweet. famous Sammy got fit into, no? Concept uh, series? Yes, it was. That was it's exactly Sammy. How is Sammy? I haven't talked alive? to him in a while. Yeah, he's alive. He's doing good. Now, Sammy is about as addicted to golf as anyone I've ever met. So the fact that he might not be able to play for a month of his usual is going to be killing Struggling. him. Struggling. He'll probably be building a home simulator or something to cope. Loves his golf. Justin, do you think Tiger will go to more slightly forgiving irons over his TW nope. blades in the next few years. There is a far greater chance of hell freezing over <laughs> than Tiger Woods changing out of a blade. Tiger will be playing a blade forever. He doesn't miss it all. Forever. <laughs> he's he's he just, doesn't. the day he, uh, he stops playing blades is the day he stops playing golf. I is, think that's is what I'm gonna guess. Unless he's like 80 years old, then maybe he might yeah. use something to get it up in the air. Jack is asking, did I enjoy Aaron Dill's live yesterday? I got into Aaron's live for about five minutes and Noah started screaming the place down. What's the matter with that kid? Like, Noah, <laughs> do you not know that's AD on there? The guy's made you a lovely wedge for the say, love of goodness. I he's going to make you a wedge. He's going to make you a wedge. He's not making don't, it don't out. Be, don't be so ungrateful. 
At your four months of age. It's his first, it's his first life lesson. You don't understand these things. You were going to get a custom wedge, Noah. Um, guys, thanks for everything. Learned a lot. Question in uh, part two, previously fit for... Okay, there we go. So oh. TS3, 8.5, 2 the BB6X. Oh, I'm trying to find the, the other part. What's the name I can help you? Um, Quentin Hooker. Quentin? Yeah, Quentin. From quite a while ago, was it a super? It would have been probably a super. Yes, you can grab that. Um, previously fit for a TS3 8.5 BB6X. Great shaft, I really like the BB. Um, I think oh. you, it, you guys have maybe remember. Oh, that's the one you're getting. Damn. <laughs> I was all yeah. excited. I, was I like, found oh, it! Out of the, end. Um, the, the Graphite Design XC uh, is one of the shafts, or the shaft that has sort of replaced that as a slightly more tip stiff um, shaft. So we'll try and find and find that. I'm, I'm, I'll find it. Just make sure, guys, please don't add any questions right now because we are officially swamped. Bobby, on my question the other day, I'd have, yeah, we got that one, I think. Uh, Marianne has me on Ian's waiting list when TXG reopens. Lovely. Atta boy. Atta boy. That's good. Uh, Rob is coming in from the UK. Is there much in the surrounding area as we'll need to make a holiday trip? Oh, what a question. Yeah, you're coming to a great area. Um, it's one of the best Rob, cities in the world. Definitely. In, in preparation for your trip, make sure you sort of uh, have lots of correspondence with Marianne. We can, we can help you sort of plan days to go and do different things. If you want to play golf courses, we can recommend some of the great public ones. I would definitely recommend playing some public golf around here. Eagle's Nest is oh. great. TPC Toronto is world class. It is. What a great three course facility that is. Um, There's so, a bunch. Yeah, so much to do. Great food. Um, great sort of, you know, just a great city break uh, overall. Um, I have Quentin email you because I only see okay. the one that he, I only see the ones that you. Um, Quentin, do us a favor. Email is the same thing as before. Info at txd.ca uh, as a super chat. We will make sure that one gets answered. Um, we will do our best. Okay. You just have a message you want to grab from. Is it, this is your next one, Jordan. I've got Nicholas here. Okay, Nicholas. Uh, thoughts on shaft selection for a six foot five player. Lots of speed due to total length, but not muscling it. X100 AMT, that is the one, my man. That is a great option. I think AMT, keeping those long irons a little bit on the lighter side. For someone who doesn't physically want the heft of the, of the, the shaft, um, you've got those are, are, are a great option. Um, you know, I mean, something in the, the sort of lighter side of it, you, I think KBS Tour, like I alluded to earlier on, and, and, uh, and the 120 is, is not a bad option as well, higher balance point. Okay. Um, currently have a tailor-made R7 CGB Max irons, which are 13 years old. Would I gain distance by upgrading modern irons, even if the lofts were weaker? Um, you may not gain distance, but you would have more optimized launch conditions. CGB Max, there wasn't, I mean, there was some tungsten in that head, but I, I, I always felt like CGB Max kind of dived out the air a little bit. Um, you know, one thing, if you look at how Ping described their uh, iron, their face flex technology, it's like a dive board. So they get face to contribute to the launch angle. So, you know, sort of um, separation of the, the upper, sort of um, the top of the club on, on the, the, the top line, trying to get that to spring and load and, and launch the ball a little bit higher has been an evolution uh, of, of our iron technology. That next one, I think he's just asking if you'd be able to get something better out of that. I launched a Mizuno ST200. Yes. I mean, I think the best thing you can do, Josh, is work and hit up in it a little bit more. Yeah. You're always, you're in a good high launch or sort of, you know, lowest launch mid spin right now. If you can get to a little bit more uh, on your, if you're right hand and get a bit more tilt at address, work on hitting it up more, your launch will go up, your spin will go down and that to, um, 245 will certainly get a lot more than that. You'll, you'll be up, you'll pick up 30 yards just by keeping the exact same product and, and launching it a little bit more. Um, Josh, high lofted three wood to replace my M2 with a TZ5, TZ6 75 M4. Uh, high lofted three wood. Four wood. Yeah, the, a high <laughs> lofted three wood is a four wood, you're absolutely right. Five wood. <laughs> Um, uh, 
something with it. I mean, I think we found that sim because of the amount of weight that's down low in that so sole. Good. That 80 grams in the sole is, is really, really good. We found that launched uh, really, really easily. And I'm a person who can't launch the three wood and yeah. I can get that up in the air and kept the spin down. And really quick as well. It's a rocket launcher. Um, so, so we had one of our, it's not a super chat, I'm just gonna grab it. Okay, um, throw it at me. Mr. McKenna's new member, he's asking about a sim driver head. Yeah. Uh, Tensi Pro 70TX as sort of an anti-hook driver. You like that? As a, as a, a Tensi what? Tensi, Tensi Pro Orange. Orange? Yes. Toe weight configuration here. But make sure you, uh, make sure you get, um, yeah, the, the, and, and actually a little bit more head weight in there as well. If you hot can. melt action? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hot melt. And, and try and avoid a mid-size grip or some kind of heavy grip. Okay, good. Um, Blake, Maverick Sub-Zero, every test I've seen has been dreadful with the heavyweight in front. Is that setting a total waste? <laughs> no, not definitely not a total waste um, and not zero MOI either, but it's just obviously for you that doesn't work, as in for Matty Boy, it doesn't work. So um, generally speaking, even for that type of player, moving it to the back, the, the MOI is adjustable, but it's not enough that if it was a total waste of time at the front, it's not all of a sudden going to become magical at the back. Mm. It's probably just not the right head for you in general. True enough. It has a particular clientele, doesn't it? Yes, sir. Where uh, are you at, Matthew? Uh, Matthew. Seems like post-fit gapping is essential and critical part of fitting. How do you manage this for people who are traveling from out of town for TXG? Yeah, very difficult. We just try and keep as open uh, of a dialogue as we possibly can. And we make sure that when you get your clubs, give us the feedback as soon as, uh, as, soon as you know, you, you've had a few rounds under your belt. The use of Arcos is going to be a game changer for us with our, our traveling customers mm. and being able for us to be able to make sure your, your gapping is good, your dispersion is good, making sure that your, your performance is still as we expected it in the fit. So using a system like Arcos, I mean, it's a couple of hundred, well, probably 250-ish uh, US for a for set the, of Arcos. For the grips? With the grips. So the sensors, are, ugh, don't quote me, I think they're like 180 for the sensors. Perfect. But whatever, it's get, less. Get that. Like, get the sensors. Yeah, if you're coming in from out of town and you want to ensure that you're, you get the most out of your fit, get that. And then we'll, we'll also consult with you if adjustments ever do need to be made on Loft mm -hmm. and Lies. The best places to go, the most trustworthy shops, the, the best people to make any adjustments. The network. Yep. Um, Jordan is your next Jordan. One? Jordan has a PX handcrafted yellow 6563 and a TS driver with an extra four grams in there. Love that. Mm. See, even with the extra, uh, you know, head weight that's still coming out of D2. Yeah. What would be a recommended shaft on the three wood? Mm. It's tough without knowing anything about your launch conditions. Um, or not in launch conditions, delivery conditions, Jordan. It's a, it's a toughie. Um, you know, pretty stout profile in, in hazardous yellow. Not the stiffest, but it's definitely in the stiffer sort of category. Um, something like, something like Tensi Blue would be decent. Um, what else have we got in there from other ranges? What do we have on our wall that if you came in here, IZ would be nice. Yeah, that'd be a good wise? option. VA, something like a nice villain. If you need something a little more stout, and the Drago range would be would be nice. Again, if you're in the stiffer sort of shaft, you, you're kind of almost giving the idea that you've got quite a lot of speed. You're playing X Flex, but light. I think something um, something even you know Fujikura Pro 2.0 Tour spec is in is in a lot of uh, matrix um, for a lot of companies. You just have one more there, pal. a boy, Brad. Would you recommend a utility iron for hitting into the wind in Texas versus driver or five with it just blown? I would, absolutely. Mm. Key to that, uh, Brad, is the center of gravity being further forward. The iron head is tall, so it lifts the CG and puts it forward. What that basically does is when you hit that iron in the middle, you retain the, law and the launch, and if you hit it low, you get a little bit of a lower launch situation. Most people are because of the firm turf as it would be in Texas. They're hitting slightly below the CG, so you mm. will get a little bit more downward tilt on the head versus a fairway wood or anything else where the shallower profile will allow you to hit it in the middle or higher, increase in launch. Obviously, CG being deeper as well is going to have a contribution to dynamic loft. That's a nice little answer, pal. All righty.
Okay, good stream. I think that was maybe our busiest. I mean, you know, the amount of uh, the amount of questions we kind of zoomed past at the end. I mean, we tried to go question by question, but um, depending on our schedule in the next few weeks, <coughs> excuse me, um, we're doing a lot of podcasts, so we're trying to keep the lives a little more concise time-wise. Yep. Um, so yeah, we'll try to do a couple longer ones later, but we always yeah. appreciate you guys tuning in. Nice turnout as always. As always. And uh, yeah, another live Monday, Monday mid-morning Eastern time. Yep. Uh, Pete Finch on the podcast today. Um, Mark Crossfield Monday. Mark Crossfield Monday. Uh, you're going to be talking with the guys from KBS next Thursday. Yeah, yeah. Got the guys, uh, Kim Braley from KBS. We're going to take a dive, uh, dive into. And Big Alex Etches on an Insta Live. Big Al. Soon. I don't know when. Yeah. Twelve hour time difference is really tough. We we have two things. We we're going to do an Insta Live with uh, with with the big man, Big Al, and we're also got a match lined up. This is the best. Can't wait for that. I think it's going to be hilarious. So funny. Um, a big Alan is, is is partner in crime on uh, on camera <laughs> partner in crime. <laughs> <laughs> I just I, th I saw it the other day and I'm like that's like, that has to be a thing. I read your message. I'm like, did he do that? And you're like, yeah. No, no, that's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be good. Mm -hmm. uh, All good. right, wrap All us right. up, pal. Um, good. 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 Yep. Just a big thank you to everyone. Absolutely. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. Keep your social distance, mm -hmm. and we will see you on Monday back on the live. Love it. Bottom right there. Yeah, there you go.